Welcome everyone. This is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today we're going to be going over how to set up the clarinet throat tone keys, clarinet A and A flat on the upper joint. Before we get to that, we do have a hashtag for you. It is clarinet throat tones. Make sure you put that in the comments below. That's going to enter you into our drawing for 10% off tuition of any of our uh, coursework that we have coming up in this year. So we have our advanced saxophone course coming up in September, and we have our uh, uh, I'm drawing engraving. a blank. Engraving. Engraving. Thank you very much. I got you. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's why we have these get-togethers. That's, right. right. um, that's right. We have our engraving course the first week of October, so check the education portion of our site for that. And of course, Ryan is fully immersed uh, with a student out there. Uh, he is spending a full week one-on-one -on -one, uh, in our Sax Pro Shop immersion he's in, course. He's immersed in the immersion course. He is totally immersed in the immersion Man. course, so we're going to do some clarinet stuff today. Um, so if you want to also check out what it would be like to come here and stay and work for about 40 hours just on advanced saxophone repair one-on-one, -on -one, uh, check our education site out for that. Mm -hmm. um, the winner, so we had our hashtag from last week, and uh, so the winner for this week is Jerome Jagroup. Jerome, uh, congratulations. Nice. Send me an email to rich, R-I-C-H, at musicmedic.com and uh, we will get you your prize. And make sure you uh, also just uh, take this, put this in the comments below, and also if you like this series or like this content for instrument repair, make sure you share it around with your friends and like and subscribe if you would. All right, so Ryan's in doing his thing in the course. Immersed, immersed. He's immersed. So Leroy, we're gonna be talking about the A and the A flat. Yes. Uh, tones, and I know that they are kind of, you know, known for having response issues, intonation issues. Um, how do we go about setting up uh, the keys to solve these, and what specifically are you going to be working on today? Cool. We'll go over that in a second, but to get this process started, we'll go over, like, the tools and supplies. There's not very much, so it's okay. kind of it's nice and kind of quick. Okay. So... Obviously, a good pair of pliers. I like the I like the Knifex duck bills because I can use them for almost everything. All right. Um, feeler gauge. I've got a nice double-sided one. Cool. Screwdriver. What size screwdriver is that? This is the. I want to say it's the E. Okay. I say it's the E screwdriver. Size E looks like it. Nice and um, the, it makes the heads nice and small to go in for the smaller rods, so you don't have to worry about hitting the posts or doing anything weird. Okay. Um, we have two clarinet joints because we're doing A and B, but usually you would just need one, obviously, unless you're working on more than one. A uh, little cutting block, a screw block to hold the rods and the screws as you're working on the instrument. Um, I've got the eighth inch natural cork, but the um, the tech cork equivalent thickness is also also good to have on hand and Teflon. I've got two thickness here. Here I've got um, three thousands and five thousands. Okay, so zero seven six two millimeters and one hundred twenty seven point one two seven millimeters. I'm glad you did that because I could not do it. Yes. <laughs> Thank There's you very much. a couple other things. Two more things. Sorry, three more things. Contact cement, sandpaper, and probably wondering what this is for, but we'll go. We'll see in just a second masking tape okay so that's the tools and supplies you're going to need so now we'll go, i'll say i guess to go about doing i'll say doing the process and knowing what to look for so obviously you're going to want to make sure the pads are on there so you can check key height and pad protrusion and all that other stuff okay um, also keep in mind that this is assuming that all your keys are straightened there's nothing bent or anything weird. So key orientation is already I'll say, situated in this. So that's so take that out of the equation when we're going over this. All right. So the mo one of the important things to do to look for is to make sure the I'll say the cork shape. When you're doing this, you want to make sure that the shape of the cork is making maximum contact with the body, not just like a little edge of it. So if you're looking at this one here, you can see that little sliver and it's like it's basically uh, parallel with the key itself. You're just basically putting on a, a flat piece of cork on the key. The problem is when you push the key itself, just the edge is hitting that is hitting the body. So it's going to mm. make that feel real spongy. And over time, especially if you use natural cork, it's going to compress super fast. And it's basically going to you're basically going to start hearing clicks. 
in two places, either the key hitting the body itself or the or the underside of the A key hitting this F sharp mm. uh, pad pad cup under the key itself. Now this one here, nice color on that clarinet. I know, music medic blue man. Well, this might be a, this might be a thing. But and you and you heard it here. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, the the shape here you can see it's a little bit more of a wedge shape. It's not. It looks more like a triangle. So it's basically a nice nice contact surface and nice bluing area on the top of the key. And then another flat, flatter surface that's coming in contact with the body itself. So there's a higher and bigger surface area of cork coming in contact with the body, which makes the feel as you're playing way more solid. And this is the this is the desired effect that you're actually looking for. Okay. So at that point, once you figure out the cork thickness and get and get the key height situated. Um, making sure that the underside of this key, of the A key, does not hit or touch the, that F sharp pad cup. If you're hearing a weird click, it's, it's because the underside of the key is hitting that. That means the cork is too thin, so you'll have to, you'll have to take it off and restart and, and start all over again, which it's not very time consuming, but making sure you're getting it right. Okay. So at this point, the next thing is, I, I will start with this one as the example. You're going to want to put the A flat key back on the instrument itself. So just make sure to hook hook the spring. So you've got your cork on there, and you you've got your key height. Um, and now we're going to be setting up the timing. Is that right, or we're going to be putting some other materials on there? Uh, both. Oh, okay. You're 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 like on the mark with on the mark, man. <laughs> so. We're doing so. We're, so when we're at this point, we put the A flat key on here. We're doing two things at this point. Um, most modern instruments and even older instruments will have like a little bit of a will have a little bit of an adjust. will have an adjustment screw here, so that allows you to easily adjust the. I'll say the timing, as as Rich had said, which is exactly right between the A key and the A flat. Um, the thing you're going to want to do with this, which is different than almost any other key that you'll want to ever set up, is to have a little bit of lost motion or a little bit of wiggle play in there. Um, probably wondering why, because it kind of defeats the purpose of what the normal thought process is. Yeah, typically we don't want any lost motion. Exactly. Okay. Um, in, the, in, this, in this particular case, when we're looking at the A and the A flat, this part of the instrument right here is right kind of one of those first points of contact for moisture. Yeah. Uh, what ends up happening, depending on how wet of a player the person is or you are, um, sometimes moisture will collect underneath this A uh, pad between the, um, between the pad and the tone hole. I'm a clarinet player by trade. This happens a lot with me all the time. What can, end up, what can eventually happen is enough moisture can go underneath of that. It'll still seal but it'll lift that pad up a little bit because of the moisture. And if, and if there's no play between these two here, that'll actually lift that A flat pad up too. And if there's no moisture there, which I mean, you don't want it there anyway, but if there's nothing there, it'll actually create a leak. And then playing at that point kind of is gonna be either difficult or you won't be able to do it at all. Okay. So having that little having that little bit of play right there will help eliminate any weirdness um, in that kind of in that kind of department. So once you get that once you get that adjustment done, you're going to want to make sure obviously that both pads are still sealing. You want to make sure that you checked everything and then you are all good and both of these pads are sealing properly. The next and probably not the most important thing, but probably one of the most important things that you're going to want to check for here is to make sure that the cork on this A key is actually contacting the body before the A flat. And there's a number of reasons why. The most, one of, one of the important reasons as far as the playing, as the player goes is feel. Okay. If, if the A flat hits first, the whole thing is going to feel spongy and then, you know, you know, the playing experience is going to be not the best. Um, as far as a functional standpoint, if you're pushing the A key down, this little bar on the A flat obviously goes over it and makes contact with that A. Hmm. So if this 
key touches either this little post underneath here or the body first, there's going to be excess stress put on this, this, uh, this hinge tube and also this post where the rod goes into. So what will eventually happen over time is if, as you push it and push it and push it, because steel is going on other materials, it'll actually start to ovalize the post, it'll start to ovalize the inside of the key, which will make this key start to move, the pad won't seal, and then it creates a lot of other issues as far as playability and functional mm -hmm. and functionality as you go on. So then you're gonna have to get some key work done right. to, to straighten all that out. And from experience doing key work on the A flat key, it is an insanely hard key to do key work on. Mm -hmm. Mainly because if you again, if you look really closely here, there's Great. some bracing there. So to try to swedge or do any key work as far as re-rounding out that um, that hinge tube, it's very very difficult. Mm -hmm. So doing this simple process to make sure the key, the key corks and the keys are hitting the proper area is, again, it's a simple idea, but it's super important. So I'm going to take my feeler gauge here, which again, I have, um, it's double sided. Both materials are half thousandths inch thick. Um, the materials I'm using basically give me a little bit different feel for what I'm looking for. Uh, this particular one, I'm using the silver looking one. Um, so I'm going to test to first to see if the A flat contact is, is basically hitting the body while I'm pushing the, while I'm pushing the A. So I'm going to put that right underneath there. And as you can see, it's grabbing, it's grabbing underneath there, which is good. But let's make sure that the A is grabbing or not, or yeah, let's make sure the A is grabbing and it is not. Now, this is the A pad or the A adjustment? This is actually the cork under the, cork. the A key itself. Gotcha. Yeah. No, okay. Thank you for, thank you for specifying and making that clear. So the importance of that we just went over to make sure that this whole key section doesn't get messed up is this to hit the actual body first. It is not. So if all of our keys are straight and all the key orientation is correct, that, that would tell, that should tell you that this cork, this cork is not thick enough. Hmm. So then you'd have to take it back off, put a little bit thicker cork on there and then sand, and then sand it to the correct height. Okay. Now to give you an idea of what, of what the feel and whatever should look like. We'll go back to, we'll go back to the, the awesome blue, music medic blue, crazy, awesome clarinet here. Um, so again, we've already, we've already sanded this kind of thing and, and done that. Um, the other thing to, the other thing that I just missed, but I'm going to go over really quick is the, the adjustment screws that are on many modern clarinets either have, either are made of Delrin or have a little piece of Delrin underneath where it mm. makes the contact actually on the A key. If you look really close, there's a flat spot on that key where the screw slides and rides on. Um, there are some instruments that they're just straight up metal and then there's metal key, metal screw, then you have metal to metal. It sounds kind of junky when you have metal to metal contact. This is where the Teflon comes into play. Okay, So there there's two pieces of the material. Yes, sir. So the two thicknesses again are the three thousandths and the five thousandths. Mm -hmm. Uh, both will work. Uh, I prefer the five thousandths mainly because it's a little bit thicker and it gives and it gives the material a little more durability because if you're putting like a little a little screw on on that material and it's hitting it and sliding on it, the thinner one will work, but it may not last as long as the thicker one. So if we're thinking longevity, the little bit thicker one will probably be the better choice. And you can compensate that you can compensate for that with the adjustment screw. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Excellent. So once we so once we have that so once we've situated that with either putting the piece of Teflon on there or knowing that there's a piece of uh, Delrin or or something Teflon type on on the key under the screw, we would put that back on here. So just like we did with the other one, so slide that rod right in there. And it's if, if always it'll, it'll there. Go. We go. It's always easier doing it three feet away. <laughs> Just saying. Okay, so we have our key. So we have our key section together. Again, I've already adjusted this so there's a little bit of play between the A key and that um, and that screw adjustment. So there's a little bit of play there. Again, we'll double, we'll double check and make sure that the pads are sealing. 
So check the A flat, it's catching. Checking the A, and we're catching. So this setup is all good as far as the ceiling. Cool. Now we're going to check to make sure that this stuff is good to go. I'm going to check the A first. So I'll take my feeler gauge again, and I'll put it right underneath there. And, ooh, that's catching pretty good. That's got a nice feel to it. Now, the desired effect on the A flat is to either have have it not touching at all or it to be touching just barely. So like a little bit of drag. Hmm. And if there and same kind of concept, if there if there's a little bit of play, like similar to the adjustment when we're doing with the A and the A flat adjustment screw, if there's a little bit of play between this key and the post or however where it contacts the body, that is totally okay. And, and the main part of that is because that assures you that the A, the A key contact is actually contacting the body properly and first. So we're gonna check and see if it's catching and it's not. Well, let's see how much play we have in there. And there's a little bit, but not like a, but not a lot. And let's see if you can even see it. There's a little bit there. I probably wouldn't go much more than that. Again, because because of a, of the feel thing, you don't want it to like do this huge drastic throw. But again, that little bit of play will absolutely ensure that that a um, the a key contact will contact that body first, and then it will eliminate any weird possible key and hinge rod and stuff damage as you as as you move forward with the repair. Hmm. Okay. And there you go. So. We've, we're going to check our cork to make sure it's the proper thickness yes. and have the key height be correct. Uh, we're going to make sure our adjustment for the screw, the adjustment screw, but the connection between the A and the A flat is adjusted yep. properly. You might need some material in there. And we just want a little bit of play between the A and the A flat key so that the A key touches the body first. Right. I got it. You got it. <laughs> and one last thing really quick too is like, say if you're doing this and there's too much play in here on the A flat. Okay. Um, but you have plenty of room in here between the, the F sharp pad, pad cup, and then the underside of this A key. And if you kind of just need to take a little bit off of the cork on that A. Uh, what you would do is the sandpaper and stuff we showed you before, you can rip a little piece of sandpaper. You can get it thinner than this, just basically just enough to get in, in between here. Um, the only caution that I will give you is that if you leave everything assembled, especially the um, the A the F sharp pad, make sure that the sandpaper doesn't hit that and destroy okay. the pad. Um, if you feel safer taking it off, it's pretty easy just to take that back off and then you're good to go. Can you show them real quick how you would do that? Absolutely. So what I would basically do, and this is where the masking tape comes in. So remember the the, the wild card ingredient mm -hmm. here? Yeah. So this is where this comes into play. So you would basically take a small piece. You would just rip off a small piece of masking tape, just like this. And again, it's not, it's not thin enough, but it'll give you the idea. You'll basically put it in between the body and the key cork to, to protect the body from getting scratched. Okay. You would take your sandpaper, put it under, put it in between there and then just push the key and then pull. And so the, the grit side of the sandpaper, that's gonna be on the material, not on the body. Well, I mean, if you really want, if you really want that sanded finish, <laughs> put it right on the body. But if you wanna keep it nice and clean, I would definitely put the grit on the cork side. Okay. Yeah. It's just as important detail to so <laughs> mention it. Just no, absolutely. I've, I have seen some crazy things and as weird and as simple as it might seem, yeah, I would, I, I've actually, I've seen it. So there you go. <laughs> well, Leroy, thank you for that excellent demonstration. If you have questions on how to set up the A and A flat throat tones, be sure to put them in the comments below. Be sure to lock, lock, lock like, and subscribe and uh, tune in next week. We're going to have Ryan back with us when we do uh, some advanced saxophone work. We're going to be doing uh, how to sleeve a post, which is something I haven't seen anybody do in a while. So it's, that'll be very it's a, interesting. It's a very, it's a very, I'll say it's a very advanced repair. It's it's a very cool thing to see. Yeah. It's so yeah. We're looking very, forward. Stay tuned to it. It's a very, it'll be a very cool one. For yeah, sure. we're looking forward to that. Make sure you take clarinet throat tones. Put that in the comments below to be entered into our drawing for next week as well. Uh, that's going to do it for today. So until next time, happy repairing.